See, we see Jesus as the exact opposite of this world. As coming, He had the right to be proud. You see it? I'm getting it. But yet, He was humble. He came humble. It just blows my mind. Let's look at some of the, some of the stories surrounding this. This is a, a Jesus talking. And uh, if I remember correctly, the disciples in numerous occasions had argued about who was going to be the best or who's going to be the greatest among the twelve. You know, and, uh, so this is one of his responses. But Jesus called them to him and saith unto them, You know, ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And their great ones exercise authority upon them. Now, I want to talk about public servants. This is what Jesus is talking about. You know, the, the kings and, and lords of the Gentiles, they're not servants to the people. They are lords over them. They, you do what I say, you're my property, right? So that's what Jesus is getting at. You know that this is how the Gentiles uh, act. But, but... So shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. So Jesus is saying, don't be like the Gentiles. We're going to be public servants. Servants to God's people. The chief of all of them is Christ and he was the greatest servant. See? So it's totally opposite of this culture. These, these kids that are running around trying to make themselves something. And Jesus came and made Himself nothing. For us. We, we need to soak that attitude up, don't we? For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, like the lords, the Gentiles, you do it for me, you do this for me. He says, no. The Son of Man didn't come to be ministered to, but to minister and to give, not only to minister, but to give His life a ransom for many. Oh, wow. The only guy that had the right to be prideful, the only guy that had the right to show himself as awesome, and He came not only to be a servant, but to give His life for ransom. Man, is that exciting. See, I believe that God's people need to be rebels. This is a concept I had I, I, that I kind of developed because I, I, I admit I am a little bit rebellious. You guys wouldn't know that. But I found out in my late, middle, late tw 20s, maybe 30s, okay, mid 30s, stop laughing. I found out that. The best way to rebel is to rebel against the world and its thoughts and its actions and its beliefs. Rebel towards God. Does that make sense? And that's why these scriptures like this just make me so excited because I'm saying, you know what? This is totally against everything that these people in the world think. It's opposite. It's the right way. You know, some people say Jesus turned the world right side or or Jesus turned the world upside down? No, no, no. He turned it right side up. Right? Okay, let's look at our next uh, scripture. Uh, again, Jesus is talking to the disciples and He says, But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself. Now listen to this. This is what the world is doing. This is a warning to your gangsters, to your to your uh, Hollywood and to the sports guys that, you know, they go out there and they win a touchdown and they're all like, yeah, I did this, you know? And your rock stars are standing up there and, yeah, yeah, praise me and all this junk. I mean, they do. They, they may not mean to, but they do. They do these things. We see it, right? Just like that picture I showed you, uh, Tiger Woods had just made a, a shot, I guess. And he's, yeah, you know? But listen to what this scripture says. And whosoever shall exalt himself, lift himself up with pride, right? Exalt himself. Shall be what? Abased. What does that mean? Taken down. 
humbled. So this scripture is telling me that you have two choices. You can either humble yourself or you can let God humble you. Right? So let's go on with the scripture. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. See how it's a, it's a rebellion against the world? Against the world's attitude? The world says, I'm not going to let anybody talk bad about me. Talk bad about me, I get my nine out. No, right? That's the world's attitude. But you know, our, our attitude, and it's, it's running rampant in society at work. You can't say anything. You know, you have to really watch what you say or you'll offend somebody. And, I, and we shouldn't offend people. Don't get me wrong. I don't think we should ever try or go out to offend people. But it's, it's really along those same lines, isn't it? Don't tread on me. Don't, don't you dare disrespect me. But what about, hey, don't I dare disrespect others? You never hear anybody saying that, right? They, you know, it's a policy. Don't, don't disrespect others. But you never hear people saying that. To themselves. Well, you know what? I'm not going to disrespect others. I mean, look at how people are treating old people nowadays. We were just talking in Sabbath school about uh, pulling scams on poor old people, you know. Here they are, defenseless. Uh, what was it I watched here recently where a, a guy knocked an old woman over or something? I don't remember where what it was. Just terrible. It's, a, it's that pride, that, that attitude. It's just permeating our society. Let's look at another scripture. Now this, this blows me away. And Jesus called a little child unto him. Picture that little kid. See the, in the picture of the little kid in his lap. He called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of, of heaven. Whosoever therefore, what? shall humble himself as a little child. The same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You know that little kid, he, you know, they're so humble. They're so pure. Oh, I, I, I pray that I could go back to being a child as far as a pure mind. Not knowing all the terrible things that I've learned through life, you know. Of course, God's not in the business of erasing minds. Don't get that in your head. But... If you learn enough, you can push out the old stuff. But you don't think so? No. You're always disagreeing with me, but that's okay. I love you. But anyway, so, but you get this. A child humbling them. We're to humble ourselves like little children. Look at that picture. Does that make any sense? You know, you wouldn't see a little child carrying a gun around going, hey, hey, hey give me your money. Or uh, don't you disrespect me. You don't see that, do you? That's what Jesus was getting at. Be like a child. Not, not like you see the adults being. That humbleness that a child has. That picture doesn't even make sense. And that's the reason. Because we know. We know that's not how children are. So he was telling us something, wasn't he? I want to talk about the story Daniel told. Oh, he had all of us laughing. And some of you weren't here. So I'm going to try and retell it. But I won't retell it as good as Daniel did. Daniel was saying that uh, a grandfather fell asleep on the couch one day and he had some mischievous little grandkids. And the, the grandkids got some Limburger cheese. Now, have you ever heard of Limburger cheese? If you've ever smelled it, uh, Henry gave me some one time and I opened it up and it smelled like something died in it. Oh yeah, it was you, don't deny it. Yes, yes, you. <laughs> I don't deny it, you gave it to me. You said, do you like cheese? And I, I said, oh yeah, I love cheese. And you said, well, here, try this. Oh, you're, you're dirty. So I take this home, and after a little while, a few days go by, I got that cheese out, and I, and I said, I'm going to try this, you know. He, the way he talked, it sounded pretty good. He said, it's a little strong. Strong? I opened that stuff up, it smelled like something died in that package. I don't know if it went bad or what, but it stunk. Oh, my goodness. It was so bad. I mean, I wanted to puke. It's, it was terrible. But the dog, you know, his ears, you know, he's like, whoa, what was that?